Rob Avis with Verge Permaculture here. We're just putting in this garden right now for ground swell. And uh, I just wanted to take you through the design, show you how the whole site is going to look once we're done with all the earthworks and installing everything. So here we have the concept map and it kind of displays all of the main elements that Groundswell wanted in the actual community garden outside of the greenhouse. So we actually have a community garden space which uh, buttresses the greenhouse. So these are going to be raised bed gardens and there's going to be a couple of different experiments in here with um, wicking beds and hugel wicking beds which you'll see go, to more, go together on the weekend. Um, a community gathering space with a pond and um, basically just an area for a community to congregate um, outside for workshops to happen and things like that. Um, and then we have a large portion of the community garden actually in a perennial food forest. Now a food forest is basically just a forest where everything inside of it is either edible or medicinal or fiber uh, producing. Um, and it literally mimics a forest. So we have an overstory, a midstory, an understory, a ground cover, a shrub layer, a vine layer, and probably a root layer as well. So forests are very, very efficient, and um, they generally, once once they're established, self-manage. Um, and that was a really, really, really big component for this garden is that that there was a lot of area that produced an enormous amount of pr production of food. Um, but that was generally self-managed because this area right here, the greenhouse, uh, requires an enormous amount of, of energy to keep going. Uh, areas further away from the greenhouse made sense to put into um, food forest systems. So here's a food forest right here and there's a food forest right there as well. So on the second map, um, this is kind of the, the nuts and bolts. This is when the permaculture really gets uh, into gear. Um, we've got our water map. Now, uh, in ecological design, it's really, really important that you design water first because water is the basis of life on Earth. And a lot of times, uh, water is not taken into account. And when, that, when it isn't taken into account, you end up putting things in the wrong place and you have to spend a whole bunch of energy getting water there. So water um, really formed the foundation for the placement of all of these elements in a lot of ways. Um, in the corner here of the greenhouse is a stormwater management system uh, from the city and so in really really large rain events it's possible for water to flow down uh, this corner here and so what we wanted to do is pick up any of that water in a swale. This swale is basically going to convey when we resurface the back area there the water right along the fence line here and that swale is going to uh, hydrate this slope. Water is going to be held behind it, the mound is soft and so it's going to infiltrate water into the ground which is going to hydrate this whole area of the garden but also spill out into this pond right here. So we're at the spillway of the swale right now and I'm not sure how easy it is to see on the video there but um, the spillway is at an elevated surface that should be level from one side to the other which is slightly higher than the bottom of the swale right here. So what that does is it encourages water to back up in the swale, which is what's going to encourage that infiltration into the swale mount itself. So when the swale does fill up, um, it's going to flow over this surface right here and into this teardrop shaped pond that we've dug. In addition, we have two underground water cisterns that sit here um, and they currently just overflow right where they are. We're going to reroute that overflow so that it moves through a pipe and also goes through this pond. So this pond becomes a very, very central component. It's aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it's going to have uh, constructed wetland on this side right here, which is going to clean the water. We're going to have a whole bunch of native riparian species in there with a small amount of exposed water on that side of the pond. Now when the pond overflows, we have two spillways. So we have a spillway uh, moving through this food forest right here, and we have a spillway that will overflow over, over this path right here into this food forest. Spillway from the pond, so when the pond overflows, it's gonna overflow this surface right down here into this mulched basin, which we've dug out. So we're about 12 inches deeper than the area around us. And uh, we've just started infilling with organic material. You can see that the soil on site here pretty much has no organics in it at all. All right, it's basically just subsoil. It's, it's a combination of silt and sand. Uh, and so what we're doing is a, a modified version of a sheet mulch. So, so far we've got grass and, and 
deer poo in here um, with some mulch. So that's gonna bring us our carbon. We've inoculated it with compost tea already. And um, how this is gonna work is that this pond will overflow into this mulch basin here. And then just over by the tape measure there, there's another spillway. And that spillway will then spill over into the far mulch basin, which is also gonna have food forest in it. The water is gonna preferentially go in this direction, which is higher in the landscape. So again, it's gonna infiltrate water through the entire site, subsurface, very low evaporation. Um, and when this system gets overfulled, over, overflows, sorry, um, it will actually overflow right here across this pathway into another mulch basin, which, which is where all that rock is right now. So it'll become a little bit more clear once we finish doing all the earth moving over in that area. And then the final water harvesting feature here is the, um, the water catchment off the front of the greenhouse. So we're gonna put a small trough right here. This trough is gonna pick up um, uh, right near ground level and it's also gonna deliver any water harvested off of the glazing of the greenhouse into this food forest as well. Now if all of these systems function properly, what's gonna happen is that the majority of this garden is not gonna require additional town water to, to keep irrigated, which is really, really important. Um, both from an ecological perspective, you know, for the health of these plants, but also from a footprint perspective because water consumes enormous amounts of energy, especially potable water, to bring to our tap. And so whenever we can irrigate a landscape in a very um, water efficient way without having to require city infrastructure to do it, it makes a huge, huge difference. And then finally, I'll just show you this last detailed map. Um, uh, you know, lot, uh, lots of details here, but uh, basically we've got um, all of the spe a lot of the overstory species for the food forest. So you can see we've got blackberries and plums, white currants, Juliet cherries, western sand cherries, hascaps or honeyberries, uh, sea buckthorn, um, plum, pear, apricot, nanking cherries, hazelnut. Um, what else do we have here? Red currants, Saskatoons, elderberries, um, and there's lots and lots of other plants that will be in the mid-story and the understory. So you can see it's gonna be a really biodiverse site, tons of food coming off of this, uh, and it's gonna be an absolute gem within the town of Invermere. And I'm really excited to be working with Groundswell on this project.